Hello everyone. Good day. Hope am I audible? Yeah, please can someone acknowledge am I audible or not? Okay, sir. A very wonderful good afternoon to all our honorable guests, faculty members, esteemed alumni, and esteemed students who have been present learn from the experiences of our esteemed alumni who have achieved a great success in their respective field of work. Before we begin, as we always start an auspicious event with remembering our gods. So I would request to all of you to join hands for Saraswati Vandana. My voice is audible. Yes, sir, you are. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, thank you so yes, much. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to welcome today's eminent speaker, who has happened to be my first batch student, Vikas Balyan. It gives me a immense pleasure to welcome uh, in such an uh, prestigious institute which has given a plenty of milestones who are splendid over the uh, countries and the world and globe as well. So I welcome Honorable Vice Chancellor, Pro Vice Chancellor, Registrar, Finance Controller, Director Professor Neera Singhalji, and Today's speaker, Mr. Vikas Balyan, for the Alma Meet, which is being organized in the umbrella of Sir Choturam Institute of Engineering Technology, CSIS University, Meerut. Welcome once again. Now over to you, uh, the anchor. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words for us. As we all know, when we work in IT sector, the amount of documentation, strategic development can simply be overwhelming. To understand the strategic implementation and formulation, I would like to welcome engineer Vikas Valyan, sir, NPO expert in Nokia. Currently, <clears throat> he is joining with us from Kenya. Engineer Vikas Valyan sir graduated from SCRIT in 2006 with a major in CSIT branch and he started his career in software engineering but switched later in telecommunication field and working with the various telecom vendors like Ericsson, Jetty, Nokia. This is the brief introduction of our alumni. And now, here is an important announcement for all the attendees. If any attendee have any query, then we have a chat box to source your questions. 
we request our alumni to answer your question at the end of speaker session we will also provide the feedback form for all of you in chat box during the session and all participants should fill that feedback form for getting the e certificate now i would like to request our alumni to share their college experience as well as give a direction to our students so that they can absorb the knowledge and choose the right path for their future over to you sir yeah thank you thank you everyone first of all let me brief about myself my name is vikas baljan it's a brief one so first of all i want to thanks from my bottom of heart to everyone my respected seniors and my mates and faculty members to inviting me and giving me the chance to speak here and it's a wonderful time to me join to you and uh, it's my pleasure i can say it's my pleasure to meet you and all the my respected vice chancellor respected vice Chan directors or dean everyone so i want to thanks all of you for inviting me on this occasion so uh, it's a pleasure for me so let me I, as i told you my name my name is vikas baljan i have been completed my btech from crit in 2006 i was the part of the first batch that we started our engineering career from chaudhary charan singh university and uh, during that period it was a as we started that we are the first batch so there was learning a lot of experience a lot of hurdle as we started the first batch so there was a new setup but i can comment that we are one of the best institute nowadays so we are we are happy and we are pleased that everyone all of us belongs from scrit and it's a wonderful place to learn and uh, it's a different play, different uh, exposure things we can say that we are part of a campus if you will go to a small private college so there is different uh, culture so you you have more seniors phd students mphil and all the things there are a lot of exposure for learning and uh, nowadays scrit is one of the best institute in up or we can say in india as well and from our colleague from last batch like uh, i have completed in 2006 so after that my colleagues and my many friends are in different parts of world even usa france and netherlands uh, many of the parts of country and they are doing well they are in good position nowadays so we can say it's a good learning for us and uh, giving me thanks again for giving me the chance to speak here and uh, uh, i will share my experience like i have work i am working from last 14 years in telecom sector before that i was in software part but that time software part i could not uh, gain much i can say that one uh, but uh, from telecom sector i am from last 14 years so i can share my experience my exposures career growth and all the things in telecom sector but before moving to that i want to hear something from your side that's what your expectation so that we could we could go point by point so let me share my screen and i will note down the points so that we could note down and we can go and i can give you as much as possible from my side for the telecom sector and your learning and all the things please confirm once my screen is visible and uh, is it visible No, sir. Just a second. Yeah, it's visible now. Yes, sir. Now it is visible. Yeah. So, any of you, if have any query or any questions, so that uh, we will cover all the topics and all the points. So, first of all, your major queries for the telecom sector and expectation from my side, so that I could write down here and I could I could fulfill it. Uh, before after that, we will start. Few points. If anyone want to have any query or anything else. Anyone? So there is no query from your side. <laughs> it should be surprising that you have right. not any query. OK. In between, you can stop me or interrupt me anytime. So let me start from my side. So is my screen visible for you? Yes. Yes, sir. It is. Yes. Yeah. So we are going to cover telecom overview, technology evaluation, career opportunity in telecom industry. 
So basically, we are focusing on that one. Why we require the telecom and what's the growth and what's the field of that one? Telecom, actually, everyone is studying in their engineering as well, physics, maths, and all the analog and digital or the telecom. That's we are connected in telecom in our regular life, day to day to routine and the day to day experience. So we are connected with telecom. Like we are using the, we have the fields like software. Everyone wants to be in software, but telecom, that's our part of life nowadays. So let me give you a brief description. So our agenda will be wireless generation and huge technology latency throughput and applications. Demand, nowadays, what's the demand and uh, what are the connected device and growth? Upcoming wireless technology, main telecom equipment manufacturers and the uh, company that uh, which could be the career growth and the company to, on which we can get the opportunity to work with them. So we are having these topics, main topics. I am not covering technical and all the things. Actually, it's a short time. So we will cover the overview. Uh, actually, everyone aware that in our generation, we have seen the 2G. Most of the most of us have to have seen have seen 2G, 2G part, 2 gen, second generation. That was the second generation. Before that, there was a first generation, one-way communication or push to talk. That one way, like we use the walkie-talkie. That was the one-way communication, simplex. And nowadays we are using the duplex mode. So first generation, you uh, it was introduced 1980 in USA. And uh, maximum throughput speed was 144 kbps, and it was used only for the voice calls. Second generation launched in 1990, Finland, that also having the 144 kbps speed, but being used for voice, SMS, MMS, and simple internet. You can browse, uh, if you remember time for 10 or 20 years ago, you have the GPRS. If you want to open any email, it will take two, three, or four minutes to open that email, simple email. But after that, Overgrowth from changing the evolution, bringing the evolution in the technology to enhance the experience. And third generation launch in Japan, 2013. That's we called it 3G. WCDMA, UMTS, or uh, uh, 3G. So 3G was introduced in 2013. Sorry, 20, uh, 2003. And maximum speed, theoretical speed, that's the without any enhancement like the MIMO and other things and multi carrier. So it was 14 Mbps. And it was being used for the voice, video call, web browsing, chatting. So we can do most of the things on internet, downloading the movie and all the things. Fourth generation nowadays, it's the ongoing generation. Fourth generation, we called it LTE or LTE advance. So we called it fourth generation. It was introduced in 2019 in South Korea. So in 4G, we can get simply 100 Mbps. And it's being used for the high speed data like you you watch the YouTube or you want to download any movie or anything else or you want to chat, real gaming, all the things. So you can do audit and uh, it's the high speed 100 Mbps. So we are having that one. After that, we have enhanced 5G as well. 5G is the ongoing. On some countries, it has been introduced. In some countries, it's not. Uh, con uh, it's a, a lot of controversy. Like uh, sometime back, you have heard that USA has stopped their 5G on airport due to the some interaction in the airplane. So there, it's, it's still it's undergoing and it's under discussion. So we, in 5G, we can get up to one Gbps speed. Basic speed, if we will enhance like the MIMO, Messi MIMO, like the, there are multiple things. So we can go to beyond that one. So in 5G, there is one more enhancement in 5G reaction time, like we called it TTI. TTI is the time to, uh, uh, time to interval. So in this one, reaction time is very small, 0 0.001 second. Due to that, latency can be used to remote surgery. Like uh, nowadays, doctor is sitting in USA and they want to do the surgery in uh, India, so they can do it. Self-driving uh, cars, IoT and the home will be connected to our computers, phone and cars. So we can control our home. Nowadays, it's also introduced. I will give you some examples for that one. So these are the points and uh, I will discuss the upcoming technology as well. So these are the basic things. Now we have the basic one that we are in 4G. Everyone is using 4G like Geo is working on 4G and uh, Airtel is also, and 5G is under progress. Even we have uh, doing the testing and all the things, Airtel has launched their four or five sites, some sites in some area for the testing purpose. So these are the things. After that, this is the technology latency 
after that if we will see the first g 2g second 3g fourth 4g 5g 6g so if you will see everyone have their spectrum latency modulation what is the maximum speed what could be the use of that one so these are the overview of the things so if you will see 6g so it's it will be expected that in 2013 we will be on 6g and 6g speed will be 140 uh, one we can say greater than 1 tb tbps so data speed will be very high but uh, we are working on 5g currently so we have to talk about the 5g till now so you can see that data rate data speed in 5g as well 20 gbps so it's very high and we can latency is very low so and uh, we can connect a lot of things uh, so we are having this technology nowadays after that connected device and forecast first thing why do we require so enhancement in the telecom sector actually everyone if you remember 10 day, 10 years back or 15 years back very few people having the mobiles and they were using only cdma or gsm 2g after that they moved to 3g and now people in india we have 1.35 billion people so everyone like if we do consider our growth so approximately 800 uh, 800 billion people are having the mobile phones nowadays if we consider the device count so these are the growth every day everything is being on the internet everyone wants the life in faster way so if we will discuss about that one initially worldwide if we do check till 2021 there were 13.8 billion units are expected are connected to the internet like over mobile over Wi-Fi, uh, not Wi-Fi, over uh, like the smart, smart uh, Wi-Fi, sorry, smart AC, over uh, uh, home theater, everything is connected to the uh, internet. So global IoT forecast, that's, and we are expecting that it will increase year by year. So we are expecting by 2025, it will be 30 million, sorry, 30 billion, and there will be growth by 18%. So if you will che check this part, let me just do it. If you will see this part, wireless connectivity type, wireless neighborhood VLAN, VNAN. So 2021, it was 17%, 2025, 21 to 25 it will be 11 percent 5g iot there will be growth 159 percent i will discuss about iot as well others like our smart ac other things we are connected with the device so it will be 20 percent wired iot like we have the fiber connection at our home other things so these are the wi-fi that the wired iot it will be seven percent legacy cellular cellular so 2G, 3G, 4G. So there is not expected that there will be any growth in that one. So everyone is moving to data and we are having VoIP, voice over IP, voice over LT, voice over Wi-Fi, and voice over any of the data services. Wireless, wireless personal. So this is the growth trend. So why do we require the enhancement in technology? Actually, we are increasing our devices day by day. So these are the growth. Connected device, what could be the connected device? over smartwatch, over TV, over computer, cycle, cars, surgery, all the things. These are the basic things that over computer, all the things are connected to the, and it's come under the IoT, Internet of Things. So we can have the mobile phone, PC, laptop, tablet, mobile to mo machine to machine, consumer electronics, and everything that's part of IoT. So like nowadays, we have smart AC. You can control your AC from anywhere from the, if you have the connection in Wi-Fi, of Wi-Fi in home and you have data service in your phone. So you can connect your, control your AC from anywhere, from office, from home or from on the way. So if you want to go home, so you can switch on your AC so that it will be, your home will be cool so that you can have the relaxed time there. So it will be IoT things. Like we have the toothbrush also in IoT part. We have the, smart bulb nowadays so these are the iot things so this will be our iot things after that upcoming wireless technology 5g the next generation that's ongoing so 
uh, full force. 6G after that, we are expecting 6G by 2013. Massive MIMO antenna like a IoT devices are increasing day by day. So there are some limitations for every technology. So we have to increase the capacity as well. So we are having the like the slicing, beam forming, and there are multiple things. Massive MIMO is one of the thing. And the future of LT, and there is one technology, Li-Fi, light fidelity technology. Like nowadays we have Wi-Fi or the Bluetooth or the things. In Li-Fi, you will have a dedicated, it will be uh, connected via the light. Uh, I will, if you want, I will have the Li-Fi demo and all the things. What is the Li-Fi? Wireless charging. So these are upcoming wireless technology nowadays. And it's some of the like 5G and 6G already in picture. Massive MIMO already we are working. Li-Fi testing is ongoing. So apart from that one, in telecom manufacturer, like before going your queries and questions. So in, in, in the world, over all the world, like there are multiple queries, like uh, where is the scope, which are the organization who is giving the uh, opportunity for that one. So in telecom sectors, there are big organization. Mainly we know that uh, there are addiction Huawei, or actually it's in direct way, like we know the Airtel and Geo in India and VI, Vodafone idea. So we know that they are providing our services. Telecom sector, basically the inter uh, over operators, like they are providing over services, like the internet, voice, and all the things. But before that one, there are some backend services and backend hardware to provide those services. So these are the front face like Airtel, Geo, and Vodafone idea. But be behind that one, there are some other other vendors, other equipment to provide the services. So those, those are Cisco uh, manufacturers are Cisco, Huawei, Qualcomm, Nokia, Siemens, Juniper, Comisco, ECI, Ericsson, Samsung, Alcatel, and Motorola. And before that one, to provide they have uh, manufactured the hardware, but there are some software, there are processing unit as well. So there are multiple organizations nowadays, they are working in that one. So Vitro, Cisco, these are the software, they are providing the backend one, like Nokia, Huawei, Jetty, they are their own software development and research center there, they are working to enhance the uh, experience. But apart from that one, Vipro, since long, it's providing the backend support, BSS, compute, BSS, OSS, and all the things. There are software part as well. Cisco, Huawei, Qualcomm, Nokia, Ericsson, Samsung. Samsung also, like any manufacturer, can develop their equipment. But mainly there are, nowadays, there are only four. Ericsson, Nokia, Huawei, Jetty. These are the main uh, major four uh, uh, telecom vendor equipment manufacturers in world. So, but software part, they can provide the things. Like nowadays, TCS, Capgemini, Deloitte, MDOX, STL, and Mavenir. These are uh, new added uh, software provider, and they are working in telecom sectors as well. TCS also, Capgemini, Deloitte, MDOX, STL, Eastern Light, and Mavenir. They are developing their own cloud-based uh, network, and they are, uh, in future, they will be very soon in telecom sector as well. So these are the things. Main operator in India. If you will see, you know the Geo, Airtel, Vodafone, and Tata Tele services. Some of the part. Tata Tele services, the forgotten part, if you remember uh, time back. So there was the telecom operator. Even there were Aircell, MTN, MTS, Air. Uh, uh, there are multiple operators in India, but they have been shut down due to uh, government policy. But nowadays, we have uh, three major ones. Apart from that one, I, okay. So if you remember, if you will ask the like, uh, in my clique, in my circle, some of the, my clicks like uh, with whom we have completed OB Tech in 2006, I know that many of them are working in software, many of them working in mechanical sector, and some of them are working in telecom sectors as well. As in my knowledge and in my circle, there are my clicks who is working in telecom sector uh, from our batch and the uh, second batch as well. So Anupam Kumar Gupta, Vishnu, Saurabh, Kunal Jaitli, Mirtunjay, Kapil Tyagi, Sandeep Chaudhary, these are my colleagues who are working in telecom sectors and I'm known, I know them, where are they, and we are in touch. So these are my uh, colleagues which are working in telecom sector. There are more people, but I am aware about these one. So, this is a uh, brief summary from your side, from my side.
to explain you the telecom sector. So now it's come to you. Uh, so we can start from That's your that. side, your queries. Hello, can we start? Uh, we can start your query so that I could answer your query so that we could um, move forward. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your experiences and struggles that you faced in your journey. And we are really motivated through your share, sir. And also, thank you so much, sir, for enriching our little treasure of knowledge. Now, I would like to call my colleague, Mr. Deepang Tiagi, for Q&A session. Over to you, Deepang. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Sayah. So hello and good afternoon to everyone. I am Dr. Pankaj and I will be doing this Q&A session. With, yes, sir. As for now, I have collected two questions for Engineer Vikas Pajan, sir. But to make sure that we are helping the students as best as we can and on career opportunities in the telecom industry. So, if any student has any kind of query, so please leave and uh, sorry. Please leave a query in your in the chat box. So now, so my first question for you is for which the students are most curious about is what is an NPO expert and what is the working of an NPO expert in a telecom company? OK, telecom expert, NPO expert, like I started my career, majorly I am telling you about two organizations. Basically, my ex major of the experience in Nokia and Ericsson. So there are two vendors. Nokia and Ericsson. I started like uh, when I started, I started in some small vendor. After that, I switched to Ericsson. After that, most of the time after joining in 2010, Ericsson, uh, only on India market, I worked for one year. After that, most of the time I was supporting most of the out of outsourcing network like the all over the world. I have worked for USA, Latin America, North America. Mexico, Brazil, Panama, Bahamas, Caribbean island, there was the 13 Caribbean island and African part as well. So I have supported more than 20 countries. During that period, I was traveling to onshore and offshore as well. So most of the time, one year, six months out of country and six months in, in country. But from last four years, we can say four years, I am out of country. I am employed in Zambia. After that, I switched to Kenya. Basically, currently I am Zambian employee, but sitting in Kenya, controlling two countries. Uh, coming to that part, NPO expert, NPO part, actually we belong to radio frequency part, RF part. So in RF, we have two things, like you have operators, Airtel and Geo. If you want to make any call or you want to browse any data, you want to download any things. So you sometimes you face the issue, like you are unable to download or speed is very low. So you will be frustrated nowadays. It's a fast time. So during that period, what we do, actually we are sitting in office, we monitor our KPI and we check what be the enhancement. So from the product point of view, we monitor each and everything. What could be the label? Uh, so we monitor each and everything. Which site is serving and what are the performance? What are the product limitation and how can we enhancement enhance the, those one? So those are the my expertise that I will monitor my network. I will find out the issues. I will identify. I will enhance my network so that I could provide you maximum output, better enhancement speed for the like voice quality, download speed. So I do performance monitoring. I do the feature implementation. I do the parameter tuning like the system side. So this is the NPO part, radio frequency part. Apart from that one, in, in like any operator, there are multiple things. I am front face for the operator. Apart from that, there are some backend side as well. We do called RF side, transmission side, core side. We can, I am distributing in three major parts. So I am the front face that the radio side. So we monitor performance all the things and do the parameter feature and all the things. That's the actually from system pr perspective. So we do that enhancement. So basically performance, optimization and en enhancement, user experience is the my basic key exercise. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, next question is for Mr. Singh. 
my next question for you is what do you think what are the career opportunities in telecom industry for csit branch and please do tell us about the opportunities to the students of other branches as well yes coming to that point actually telecom sector mainly is part of the electronics part actually we have the like the product equipment chipset and all the things basically this is for electronics one but any branch any student can join that one like i am from cs and it i am working in it so if you have any knowledge of the your the basic course like the wavelength antenna pattern iift dft and all the things so analog digital system so you can jo- you can work with the telecom industry and if you will have the expertise and uh, keen to learn so there is no obstacle for any of the technology any of the branch student so they can work with that one okay thank you sir so according to an article that i read which was published by forbes india that over the last 7 years the indian telecom tower industry has grown significantly by up to 65% and because of which india is now the world's second largest telecommunications market so sir in the next question i would like to ask you that what are the benefits of getting into telecom industry in india yes like uh, i told you for uh, in india majorly we are uh, after introducing reliance jio there were multiple operators they have shut down their operations and uh, due to some government policies and there were some uh, options for the spectrum so we have we have faced the challenge in past as well but nowadays like we have two operators mainly three operators jio if you will see everywhere you have seen the jio Uh, there were two phases in indian telecom industry once the reliance communication and the reliance jio reliance communication bring the cdma in 2002 or 3 so after that they put their was a dream for dhirubhai ambani so everyone will have their own uh, phones and everyone will be wireless techno on a wireless technology after that jio communication they have bring the revolution in data services they provided your free data services all the things and they provided actually indian market like we have the multiple smartphone like huawei redmi jio mi apple samsung and there are multiple vendors as well so everyone is getting the smartphone so if you have the smartphone you can browse you can from home or like during the pandemic everyone was stuck on their home so everyone using their classes and all the things work from home we can say study from home work from home office from home everything was being from home so for that those kind of connectivity we required the connect uh, backbone backbone is the wireless technology and the op- uh, geo and the data services for that one like we are connected i am sitting in kenya you are sitting in india so we are connected so for those one we enhance our data services like geo 65% growth even more than that actually everyone is having their own Uh, a smartphone so they are using high speed data servicing that's the things uh, jio com- uh, introduced in india after that if you will see uh, there is a major scope in telecom sector like uh, nowadays you have iot iot part i uh, let me introduce now new word iot internet of things like you have a smart watch a smart car a smart wifi sorry a smart ac everything you can control from your phone so these are the things those are connected in back end so there are two types of things one is the coverage and the capacity if you are increasing the device like in home you are having a smart tv connected with the wifi and connected with your phones so you can control from there you have a smart ac you can control from your phone a smart watch you can everything you are doing your physical work and all all the things you can control from your phone your camera cctv camera these are the iot things so sometime we are moving into the virtual world digital world so these are the things that we are increasing the device day by day and as i show you that's the expectation of uh, the world let me see if uh, my screen is visible so i show you a graph is my screen visible yeah if you will see this one actually i get this graph for you to make the understand that how we are moving to digital world so if you will see 
we were 13.8 billion till 2021 but we are expecting much more gain by 2030 for 2025 so we are expecting that 41 billion iot dic dic will be connected through internet or the wireless technology so these are the demands if demand will increase your requirement will increase that's the life cycle demand and supply so if there will be demand so there will be supply so there is a huge chance and uh, uh, let me give you an example like in some area you are uh, your home so sometimes you face the issues like you are not downloading the uh, downloading the movie or anything else or you are not able to browse the things so what will you do you will check your wi-fi or your mobile phones that how we are getting the signals and the data speed so that data speed we are increasing day by day so there is a huge opportunity to enhance the technology that's why we are bringing the uh, like 6g 5g massive mimo so this is the future so we can see that we have a lot of exposure in this uh, telecom sector and it's not like we have telecom sector what do you understand by telecom sector it's a uh, like if we so if we do see telecom sector so it's a in all time it was a, like the hardware things but it's not the hardware it's the software things as well you have to product you have to produce a lot of software a lot of features a lot of uh, products and it's a, there is a research and development as well for the same to fulfill the requirement of the world we are enhancing we have the resources uh, may hope uh, i clear your queries or anything else Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I hope the students will now have a clear picture of what are the benefits that they will be getting in the telecom industry. So, please, can of the students, yes. Yeah, please, can you come again? Yes, sir. Sir, I was saying that uh, I hope the students will now have a clear picture of what benefits they will be getting in the telecom industry. Yes. Yes. Uh, so now, as most of the students that joined us here today in this webinar are from first, second, and third year, so can you recommend few steps or courses that students should follow to get into the telecom industry? Yeah, for coming to courses, actually there is no specific course. If you are studying your engineering, you are reading the analog and digital system, correct? This is your basic course content. If I am not. And your transmission line, microwave, you have the antenna pattern, IFT, DFT, and all the technology that you are reading, digital analog system processing and the signals. You are reading all the things. If you will go through these topics, these are the things that, like the megahertz, gigahertz, and all the things that the analog and digital. Basically, this is the technology that we are working in, wireless technology. If you will have the wavelength, like the wavelength, so these are the basic to, uh, course content if you will go through this one so you will have the uh, clear picture of the telecom and what is the telecom after that or behind there will be the product for the same like analog to digital conversion uh, delay the reduce the latency increase the wavelength so like this one so we have such kind of uh, courses and the content in our physics, in our engineering courses as well. After that, if you want uh, expertise in that one, so there are particular like the digital communication. You can go beyond that one. You can do the higher studies for the same. Information technology, digital signaling processing, all the things that related to telecom. So if you will have the basic uh, idea of the all the things like the transmission, DFT, IFT, analog, digital, you can work on, on that one. And after that, you will be the specific area of uh, expertise in every field, like uh, initial, before joining the engineering, we have to bio and maths. So if you want to do in the medical field, you will do the bio. If you want to go to, into the engineering part, you will have to work with maths. So like that one, if you want to move the microwave paths or the transmission line or the analog digital or the processing, signal processing, so you have to go to, into the, that part. Yes, thank you, sir. That was really informative. And some of our seniors have also joined us today. And 
as we all know that for final year students and even for the pre final year students the time is really limited and they are preparing for their job interviews and projects so related to this my next question for you is if there is any special way to grab internships or trainings in the telecom companies uh, can you please repeat the your pardon actually maybe i am not yes, clear, yes, hearing yes, clearly yes, yes. yeah yes so uh, i was saying that if there is any special way to grab internships or training in the telecom companies yes like internship if uh, internship and i will come after that one so in internship so you can apply there are the like i am not from last four years i am not part of indian organization so i can contact there and i will let you know actually there are simple like you have electronics things so you can join the any of the telecom vendor like airtel jio nokia ericsson so there are the internship program they will teach you how to work uh, how is the processing how is the things how do we work in the telecom sector so they will give the opportunity for internship as well but i am not sure uh, currently so i can give, uh, get the details and i can let you know yes thank you sir and self confidence is a super power Correct. Once you start believing in yourself, magic starts happening. Whether you are a student, a teacher, a businessman, or anybody else, self-confidence plays an important role in every aspect of life. But sometimes, it's just not that easy for some of us to maintain self-confidence. If I take an instance, there may be some students here who couldn't perform well in their exams and are feeling depressed about it. and they are even hesitating for applying for jobs so my next question for you sir is the low percentage in your bachelor's degree affects your opportunities in big, big companies like nokia and if so then how can we overcome it yes like uh, confidence your first one that the confident and the self development confidence is the main key like in your percentage your cgpa is not your criteria of your competence your competence like uh, we have to an example like any of the engineering student could not become the doctor and the doctor could not become the engineer so your self competence like you are expert in maths but you are not uh, in other subject so it's not the things that you have the low cgpa so you could not join any organization there are a lot of opportunity in the world a lot of opportunity in telecom sector as well so if you have expertise in any of the technology or any of the field you can join there is no such challenge in telecom as well it doesn't matter but like ericsson and nokia they do campus selection as well there are some selected college uh, uh, they organize their self uh, campus selection as well uh, i will get back to you on those one as well so there is no limitation if you have done there will be some written test there will be some interviews so if you have expertise on that one and you are good on that one so there is no limitation that you have low cgpa there is no such limitation nowadays okay. but Thank you, you, you should be sound in any of the technology and you should be confident like you have the competence on the either software like any of the software language or any of the like the wave electronics part so if you have basic things basic things should be good after that there will be the enhancement there will be the training part you will they will teach you how to work on how on which field either they can deploy you on 4g or 5g they will teach you 5g technology they will you will be aligned with someone who is working already on that one okay. so don't hesitate don't think that you have the low cgpa so you could not join the nokia there are there are a lot of doors open for the everyone Yes, please. Yes, thank you very much, sir. I hope the students will learn from it. That self-confidence is one of the biggest things that you can achieve in your life. And if you have self-confidence and expertise, then you can join wherever you want in your big dream dream companies and anywhere. So, so actually, we also have <coughs> one casual question that we hope you won't mind answering it. So. the question is 
what differences do you feel in the lifestyle and work culture between india and kenya yes la, yeah it's not uh, anything to mind actually uh, let me explain you i started like i told you like i joined ericsson in 2010 after that i started my career i m- mostly i was supporting own source projects like i supported mtn uh, i have supported more than 10 countries in africa region and more than 20 countries in america and the latin america north america those parts so i have supported more than 30 countries i have traveled more than 10 countries as well so i was in like african countries five of the african countries and i was in mexico brazil and uh, usa i could not get but uh, i have supported there was a small small island 13 caribbean island jamaica barbados panama saint antigua saint uh, louis antigua there are a lot of small island so once i was out of india i have seen the difference in lifestyle one of the major things like we have natural resources limited natural natural resources but in india there are a lot of population and there is a if we have high population 1.35 billion so there are limited resources there are limited scope so everyone we are running we will get we will do the first we will get the first position we will get the job this is not the things in india due to the population this is becoming very struggle nowadays but coming to lifestyle a professional way work life balance in india we do believe that we have worked 14 hours so we will get the good opportunity we will see we will have the good hike that's not the thing out of country we should maintain our work life balance we should give our we should have the time for our work there are the 8 hours or 9 hours working hours so we should complete our task in given time we should work on ourselves as well our physical fitness and all the things if we will do the meditation physical exercise and all the things we will be fit and we will be more active energetic and personal life as well you have to give the time to your personal life as well in india we are working 14 hours we are traveling if either you are traveling from anywhere so you are spending 2 hours in traveling going to office and coming back to office so you are spend 2 hours on the road if we do consider in india we are spending over 30% on roads 30% of our life in on roads traveling either anywhere or somewhere else but out of india if you will see there are a culture whatever is the things but there should be balance work life balance for everyone so they do work there is no issue they they uh, maintain their work life balance properly they working in a proper manner in india mentality we do work like we can work on saturday sunday as well but out of country it's not mandatory not mandatory you are no one obliged to call you or say anything during your personal time saturday sunday is your personal time but it will change the things will change as per the responsibility if you are going on higher position and you are having some management skills or manager managerial role so you have to balance the things and you have to maintain all the things either you finish your task before the time or manage your team uh, so i should say that uh, out of country and in india, in india so there is the main difference for the work life balance you have your personal time you have your own time you have the dedicated time for work so that's the most important thing yes. and one of the one of the factor to settle down in kenya actually that's the that's not related to this one actually if you will come to kenya so you will not find this kind of weather here all the 12 months you can get maximum 28 degree temperature and maximum 10 degree so all the 12 months temperature will be controlled you will get the very pleasant weather it's pollution free yeah we say it's africa part but you will not get in kadan canada as well this kind of weather it's very pleasant weather maximum 28 degree temperature minimum 10 degree so you can manage there is no need to uh, have the sweater or heat uh, or like we can say that's a lot of like in temperature it's heat wave but it's very good weather one of the most important things to set to be in kenya yes dipan yes sir i think the students will learn much more things from this so now i would like to address some questions that came in the chat box so sir we will be thankful to you if you will answer them as well 
So, sir, the first question that we have received is from Udit Koi from CS branch. So, he is asking for what are the challenges in the telecom industry? Yeah, challenging. Like everyone could not get what they want. So if you will work hard, like the first choice for everyone is the money. Like you want the good package, like 30 lakhs or 40 lakhs package. Like, but this will not get you in first phase. If you are if you are getting into the Google or Microsoft or any of the big organization, so they will not provide you such things. But for that one, if you are competent, if you are expert in your domain, so you will get each and everything. Here, yeah, challenge like you are doing your BTEC, but you are doing your BTEC, you could not obtain your first position and you could not be excellent in each and every subject, but you are excellent in sub subjects. So choose your expertise, like in telecom, choose your expertise, like you are expert in the OSS part. There are things like the backend one, like you are, you can control your things like the call flow and all the things. So you can, ex you can choose your path, like the transmission, you want to be the front face or you want to learn more like the 5G, you want to go in antenna part. So you have to choose your expertise. After that, there are challenges. Sometimes you will not get the good package, good salary hike as well. But if you will work hard and you will do smart work, so there are the chances that you will be in good position and you will get the good uh, opportunity and good package as well. So challenge is the only the self-competence, but you have to develop yourself like the world is changing very fast like 1g 2g 3g 4g and now 5g so if you will be not be up to date so you will be lacking so first of thing first of all you have to be updated each and everything like you told a uh, one example from the 65 growth in last few years in telecom sector so you read it about somewhere like times of india and the things so you are updated like we are growing day by day new technology like the li-fi you can choose you can choose any of the technology you can work on that one you can but self competence and the self confident is the key yes, yes thank you very much sir so i would like to thank you again for answering all our queries and providing this valuable information to us and now I would like to call Sneha to handle the rest of the program. So over to you, Sneha. Thank you, Dipang. Thank you so much, sir, for solving our doubts. And uh, now I would like to invite Director Professor Neera Singhal, sir, to some words of blessing for us. Over to you, sir, please. Sorry, sir, maybe there is an, any technical issue. So, sir cannot join us. Uh, maybe he will join later. So, now I would like to invite Ms. Uh, Nidhi Vajia, ma'am, for some port of thanks for us. Please, ma'am, over to you. Yeah, thank you, Sneha. I hope I am audible. Yes, ma'am, you are. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you so much. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks for this Alma Connects webinar series to a webinar entitled Career Opportunities in Telecom Industry. First and foremost, I thank our patrons, Vice Chancellor CCS University, Professor Sangeeta Shukla, Pro Vice Chancellor, Professor Y. Vimala, Dean Engineering and Technology, Professor Hare Krishna, and our respected director, Dr. Neera Singhal, for giving us this opportunity and permission to conduct the Alma Connect Series 2. It's surely an opportunity for our students to have an interaction with their alumni, no current industry trends, no job requirements, and for our precious alumni, it is a come home journey. My heartfelt thanks to engineer Vikas Balyan, who is an NPO expert, that means network and planning optimization expert in Nokia, and is connected to us from Kenya. Thank you, Vikas, for this knowledgeable session. I owe special gratitude to the entire organizing team, convener Dr. Shivam Goyal, organizing secretary Dr. Gaurav Tyagi, invitation committee Dr. Kumkum Chaudhary, Ms. Divya Sharma, Mr. Udit Kori, flyer and certificate committee Mr. Rupesh, Ms. Technical team, Ms. Ritu Sharma, Mr. Vijay Gupta, Mr. Anirudh, and our sweet comparers, Ms. Sneha Sharma and Mr. Deepang Tyagi, and our media reporter, Dr. Pankaj Kumar. Last but not the least, I would like to thank our dear students from all the branches who have attentively joined this webinar. Thank you, everyone. Stay tuned for many, many such webinars in this session. Thank you so much. Over to you, Sneha. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, Google form has been sent on your chat box during session. Please uh, request to all the attendees fill up that forms. Let's look on some quotes until the service arrived. Uh, once Chadwick Boseman said, whatever you choose for a career path, remember the struggles along the way are only meant to shape you for your purpose. Now I would like to invite Director Professor Neera Singhal, sir, to some word of blessing. Please, sir, over to you, sir. I hope I am audible now. Anybody, please? Yes. Yes, sir, you are. Okay. Okay. I'm happy to know that the Institute has started second series of Alpa, uh, Alma Connect webinars from today itself. And today, we are able to have with us engineer Vikas Balian who is our alumni and passed out in 2006 batch. I know whenever an alumni is called for an interaction with young boys and girls, it is always coming home back. They always love to interact the students which are currently studying in the institution in which they have studied a log back. I have come to know Mr. Vikas Balian has been in foreign countries since a long time and a very good experience in telecommunication and currently working with Nokia. I'm able to listen him for the last few minutes and I'm sure his experience will be helpful to our young buddies engineers. I'm thankful to him for sparing his time 
and sharing his knowledge and experience with the young engineers i am thankful to dr shivam goyal the convener of this event organizing secretary dr gorav tyagi ms nidhi bhatia and other faculty members the non teaching staff the technical staff and most importantly our student coordinators for managing this event very successfully my good wishes to you all and i am sure again we will request yani vikas baliyan for some other day to join us and to enlighten our young engineers in the same field my good wishes to you all thank you thank you very much Mm, thanks a lot sir for your thank comments and it's my pleasure to be part of this one and uh, i feel very grateful and uh, the, i'm very thankful to all of you for joining for inviting me and it's uh, like uh, remembering our poly days and all the things it's a wonderful experience for me even i will share my contact number and all the things uh, anyone can reach me any time any time so i will be available for you for my colleagues and the seniors and mates and my respected teachers and all the members so whatever will be possible we are here to support you we are here to guide you and uh, always we are we all are here to be with you all the time so i will share my contact details and all the things even i have worked like uh, ericsson two major company ericsson and nokia i was part of these two major organizations so i will try to get maximum benefited for uh, the my uh, college mates and the my institutes so so that they could get the better opportunity in the world and they could go out of country as well even so that uh, it will be my pleasure to be part of the institute and it's a wonderful experience so i have shared my ex my contact details so you can get and you can contact me any time acha acha i am ha mr vikas balian yes sir i was i forgot one thing to say today we met with you online yes, so whenever sir. you come to india do come to the institute and we would like to have a an offline session with you sure sir sure any time okay. sir thank you it very will much. be my pleasure yes sir. okay okay and a special thanks for our director sir who is very dynamic personality and also a source of inspiration for many like us a dynamic personality a true researcher and very kind hearted man I would like to show gratitude to director sir and all the committee members for their motivation to organize such programs so that a bridge can be formed between our eminent alumni and the future engineer study and SCIT family and my sincere thanks goes to engineer Vikas Valian sir who enriched our knowledge and for taking his precious time from his busy schedule and for bringing his expertise and experience around the table it is really an informative session and i hope the student of scrit will take point from this and their decisions in future engineer vikas valian sir we are glad to have you with us today on behalf of scrit family we feel very opportunate to have our alumni here with us to guide and share their experiences and struggles that will motivate us for our goal and last but absolutely not least i am also thankful to all the committee members to all the attendees who are with us and now i would request to all of you to turn on your camera and i request to my colleague mr ujwal sharma to take some snapshots of it please ujwal uh over to you okay thank you everyone and now i would request to my colleague mr anirudh 
to provide the e certificate for the engineer vikas valyan sir to all so as we are reaching closer ending the session i request to my colleague to uh, provide the google forms to all the attendees and all the attendees should fill that uh, feedback form and before closing the session i would request to all kindly stand up for the national anthem जन गण मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे Jai 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 Thank you everyone for joining us thank you